are open to receive the revelation of your word and that we might live it out 24-7 by the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for this time that the church can assemble themselves together to give you praise and glory. And we thank you now for your word that we will listen and hear and take it to heart. And Lord, wherever we fail, you've made provisions. You've given us the Holy Spirit to give us that strength and that overcoming power to overcome the world of flesh and the devil. So we thank you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We go ahead and start now. And uh, the first, th what I want you to put on the board is um, uh, James chapter 1, verse 13. You know, we all look at this um, situation that has happened in this church. Uh, we may have to give Frank a shotgun up there and in case somebody comes in, he can take care of it real quick. Like, uh, we need to pray about that. We might just have to do that, you know. Or, don't worry about it. Just trust God. And if somebody comes in and shoots us, I'll uh, wave at you when we go up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, uh, you know, people say, well, why, why did that happen? Now, why did it happen? Well, if you understand the fall of man, the heart of man is in pretty bad shape because of the fall of Adam. So look at, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted from God. God didn't have anything to do with that killing in that church, any other killing. For God is incapable of being tempted by what is evil, and he himself tempts no one. So why did that young man do it? Why did those other people shoot all these people? Why is all this evil in the world? <clears throat> How many of you know that God has given us a will? You know, they, even in the Old Testament, it talks about, I put before you, and that's in Deuteronomy, you don't have to turn there, but in Deuteronomy, it talks about, I put before you life and death. Choose. So all of us, Every human being can choose either to do wrong or do right. Anybody hear that? Amen. See, the choice is up to us, and God has given us a will. Well, I don't think we ought to have all that evil. Well, we'll just take your will away. How many likes that? Nobody wants that. Isn't it wonderful you can choose what to eat when you want to eat it? Aren't you glad of, of, of the, 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 the blessings of being able to choose? See, we need to understand that. Any of us in here is capable that, uh, to do anything if we choose to do it. That's why it's so important to let the cross cut daily where that old man will die out little by little and the new man will come forth mightily. Now, you know, in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit living in them. They, they weren't saved like we were saved. See, when we were born again, our spirit man became a new creature. See, all of us are new creatures in here. Still have the same bodies. I guess you notice that by looking at me, right? <clears throat> and that's okay. I, this is just a temporary body down here, and uh, one day I won't need it, and God will give me a new body. Same thing with you. So we got all that to look forward to. But you can either choose to be mean or you can choose to be good. And, and we need to remember that. And we have the Holy Spirit in us. Now, back in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit living in them because their spirit man wasn't born again. They weren't new creations like we are today. How many of you understand that? How many read your Bible? You've read your Bible and you understand that. I assume that you read it and you know it backwards and forwards and sideways. So when I speak, I'm expecting that I'm talking to people that know what I'm saying. And you can check it out. So if God didn't tempt the guy, uh, because Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. But I'm going to tell you something else. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. So we marked out all of this stuff going on as, as two things. The devil and man choosing to let the devil use him as an instrument to do all this meanness. Are you listening? Amen. Okay. And if you're not careful, and if I'm not careful, <laughs> even though we have the Holy Spirit living in us, the devil can trick us up to do something wrong, too. 
You know, sometimes we, we, we read the Bible and say, boy, I just wish we, had, we were like the New Testament church. No, you, you don't want to be like that. Have you read the, New, have you read the Bible? <laughs> Man, the, the Corinthian church, they had more problems than, than I've ever seen. You're, you've read it, haven't you? How many's read read the Bible? Uh, you, you know that they had a lot of problems. I mean, on and on and on. Paul was trying to address the issues and get them to see what what is right. And and uh, so we want to go into a little bit of that tonight. How many of you know that God's ways are different than ours? Amen. Isaiah fifty five eight. Put that up there. It says, "For my thoughts are not your thoughts." nor are your ways my ways. My, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So as we uh, are born again now, we've surrendered our lives to God, we have to learn His ways of doing things. Are you out there, church? That's very important. Because if we're not careful, we'll put our thought into it. We, we, no, I want to do it this way. No, wait a minute. God says do it this way. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? So you've got to remember that in your life. So we follow the Holy Spirit and we do it His ways because His thoughts are different. I mean, look at His thoughts. Pray for your enemies. Are you kidding? I throw rocks at my enemies, don't you? <laughs> Who said bricks? <laughs> but see, that's, that's, that's man's ways. See, you do evil to me and I'll do evil to you. But that ain't God's ways. What is God's ways? Somebody tell me. What's, what's the scripture? Is, what scripture is that? 1 Peter 3, 9. Never render evil for evil. Everybody say never. never. Because uh, if you do, then this is what happens in our society. You know, I, I know that, that, that there are people that in the church that's been divorced. And I, I, I understand. I've counseled and I, my heart's been poured out with people that's, that's had that, you know, all of this thing, you know. But how can two walk together unless they agree? <laughs> we've got to learn to agree with one another. First, we've got to learn to agree with God. And if both parties will agree with God, they'll live together. And sometimes you have one that tries to live uh, like God wants them to live, the other one don't want them, and then you've got all this conflict, see? You have all this evil mixed up in there. So how can two walk together unless they agree? It's important that we as a church agree. So God's ways are much higher than our ways, and we need to remember that. Now, look at this here and uh, go to the next scripture, 15, verse 15, uh, James 1, 15. James. Then the evil desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and then sin, when it is fully mature, brings forth death. And that's what happened in this situation, and all these situations, and, and uh, we've seen that the shooting and all that in the churches and different places, because if man chooses to do evil, then it's a bad result. And it's awful. It's horrible. So I've made my mind up to do it God's way. And that's so important, and I think every one of you here has too. Now I want to turn to another scripture that, that's really important, and I want you to see. I want you to turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to start with verse 1. Now, we look at society, and we say, well, you know, they're all lost. They're living in darkness, and they're going to kill people and all of that. The devil's got them and uses them, and that's true, and that's everything. But you say, well, now in the church, you know, we're born again. We don't, we don't do nothing like, things like that. But let's just take a look at the Corinthian church tonight. Make sure that we don't copy this part, because there's a lot of good things in, in uh, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. Uh, I especially like uh, 1 Corinthians 13, don't you? Yeah, love. That's a more actual. However, brethren, I could not talk to you as to spiritual men. Now he's talking to Christian people here now. But as to unspiritual un men of the flesh, in whom the carnal nature predominates as to mere infants in the new life in Christ, unable to talk yet. Oh my goodness. Whew. Now he's talking to Christians. Now look at that. Hmm. We 
We've been teaching, and Willie's been helping us teach on this, on Romans 15, verse 1, 2, and 3. Talk about the you that are strong in your faith has to bear with those that are with their scruples and their baby ways. And so Paul is really getting after the Corinthian church here. He says, I can't talk to you as spiritual people. You're still babes. I can't give you meat. I still have to give you milk. Go to the next verse, and let's see what Paul has to say about this group. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not yet strong enough to be ready for it, that is, for the solid food. But even yet you are not strong enough to be ready for it. You know, it's the same thing when you raise your kids. You've you got to know where they're at in, in their maturity, and you can't feed them something too strong. I mean, you can't expect them to drive the car or drive an 18-wheeler when they're just eight years old. They've got to reach certain levels of maturity before you teach them certain things. I remember when I taught my daughter, one of my daughters, and I just about broke my neck because we had a clutch back in those days. I mean, and boy, she rocked that car like that. Oh, man. She said, I can't do it. I said, you can do it, darling. Just hold steady and let's try it again. So as a pastor, I have to realize, where are you at? See, that's important. Because same thing with our children. You've got to know where they are at. And, and you've got to try to work with them at that level of their understanding and help them to grow. Uh, <clears throat> go to the next verse now. He's talking to Christians. For you are not still, for you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh. Under the control of ordinary impulses. For as long as there are in the end, oh, oh jealousy, oh, oh, and wranglings and factions. This little group met here, this little group met here, this little group over here. Now, they're, here they are in the church, and they're against one another. And one is saying, I'm, well, Paul's my teacher, uh, Apollos is my teacher, and, and Paul's trying to correct all that. And look what it says. Among you, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh? Behaving yourself after a human standard and like mere unchanged men. Boy, he's putting it on them, isn't he? How many in here have ever seen somebody act up in church besides me? Most everybody has. Okay. Was that you? <laughs> Tell it like it is, I am. But I still love you. All right. And, and so... <laughs> That's just the way it is, you know. It, it, somebody said, well, I'm just not going down to that church anymore. It's just a bunch of hypocrites. I said, well, come on down. We'll have one more. <laughs> Listen, as far as God's concerned, we are perfect. We are born again. We are holy. We're consecrated. Can't get no more holier. But our conduct is what Paul's talking about. Our level of understanding and growth has to mature, see, so it's not a matter of us not being holy and consecrated and cleansed by the blood of Jesus, but we have to learn to act and react the way God wants us to. And, and that's a process, and, that, and that'll come through as we allow the Holy Spirit to do that work in us, okay? So now, go to the next verse now. For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not proving yourselves ordinary, unchanged men? Now, how many of you understand what Paul's talking about? How many don't? I need to milk it. All right, everybody understand? Okay. I want to run over to, and there's a lot in there I could, I could share. But he, he goes on and he tries to, to, to help them all out. And he says, now listen. Um, in verse uh, 5. Verse 5, okay, go to verse 5. What then, what then is Apollos? What is Paul? Ministering servants, not heads of parties, you know, different parties in the church, this party, that party, and these parties are uh, jockeying to be number one and all that kind of stuff and want to change this, want to change that, and they don't know what they're talking about because, see, they're still carnal. Look what he says. 
but whom you believe, even as the Lord appointed to each his tasks. Go to the next verse. Now he's trying to straighten them out. I planted Apollos waters, but God all the while was making it grow, and he gave, and he gave the increase. So some of us uh, sow, some of us water, but God gives the increase. We're all members of the one body. It's not trying to get one person uh, up on the stick further than somebody else, because if you do, that's wrong. That's what Paul's talking about. Can't do that. Okay? Now, I'm going to skip it. I wish I had time to read all of it. But I want to go down to uh, uh, verse 15. Verse 15. And when you get a chance, you need to read that whole verse because I want to move on here a little bit further. Verse 15. How many is too hot? Everybody comfortable? All right. But if any person work is burned up, Under the test, he will suffer the loss of it all, losing his reward, though he himself will be saved, but only as one who has passed through fire. So what Paul is bringing that, say, listen, we're all going to, we we, we're just servants. We're all working together. Some of us are sowing, some of us are watering, but, all, but it's God that gives the increase, and he causes us to grow by his spirit. So we need to flow in the spirit together, love one another, be kind, be gentle, uh, help each other out along the way. That's what it's all about. Um, loving your brother, preferring your brother over yourself, and all of these things, is th this is what we call maturity, see? So Paul t talks about it. Now, you know, one day we're going to stand at the uh, judgment seat, and, and our works are going to be tried, and, and, and some of it may get all burned up, but, but praise God, you'll be saved, but your work will be, and you won't get no rewards for that. So we got to do it in the right attitude, the right motive. It's very important. See, I've been in this work for 60 years. Some of you haven't been in the faith that long. But I've seen them come and I've seen them go in my day. And I've seen, all I think, all the personalities you can imagine. I've seen it in my day. And you can spot them real quick like to. And you start praying and interceding for them. That's what we have to do. And bear with a lot of them. Boy, do you have to. How many's ever had to bear with your children? Let me see your hands. <laughs> How many children in here had to bear with their parents? <laughs> Got you, didn't I? <laughs> oh, let me tell you something. Your boys are wonderful. Huh? I know you're blessed. My three girls are wonderful. I'm blessed with them. But they have been a challenge. <laughs> Now, I want you to see something here. Uh, look at verse uh, 16 now. Now, Paul's moving down in here. He's, he's getting serious with these people. He said, now, let me tell you something. I've got I to tell you something now. Well, what you're doing is wrong, and, and you're bringing division in the body of Christ. And, and, and let me tell you what God, l listen to that. Look at verse 16. Do you not discern and understand that you, the whole church at Corinth, are God's temple? His sanctuary, now let's put it down where we live. We're all God's temple, collectively and individually. Now think about that, okay? If you hurt me, you're hurting the temple of God. If I hurt you, I'm hurting the temple of God. How many sees that? Well, you better study the scriptures. It's all in the Word. Look what it says. And that God's Spirit has His permanent dwelling in you. Wow, that is awesome. The Holy Spirit lives in us. We, we need to be more conscious of the Holy Spirit. To be at home in you. Wow. Collectively, as a church, that means all of us collectively, and also individually. A lot of Christians don't understand that. They think God is somewhere way out yonder. Across the road over there, or it's over there overseas, or something. No, no, no. God the Father is on the throne. Jesus is seated at the right hand side of the Father in His in His resurrected body, and His Spirit comes down and lives in us, because we've been born again. See, the Old Testament was that people weren't born again, so God calls us to be new creatures. His Spirit could come in to these new spirits, and now He lives within us. Go to the next verse. Now this is heavy. Hold on. 
If anyone does hurt to God's temple or corrupts it with false doctrines or destroys it, God will do hurt to him and bring him to the corruption of death and destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, sacred to him. And that temple, you, the believing church, and its individuals, believers, are. Now, that's heavy. Somebody say, that's heavy. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. I know it. I've seen it. See, I've lived a long time to see a lot of different things. Some of you folks haven't seen. So you have to warn people when they start trying to divide or, or talk about a brother or a sister or the leadership of a church. You better warn them. Get, get, bad company corrupts good morals. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Bad company. There you know there's some Christians I don't want to be around. It's quiet in here. <laughs> Can I tell it like it is? Say, 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 I gotta I gotta tell you what you're gonna see. See, when I'm long gone, you're gonna you're gonna most of you probably have already seen that. Have you seen any Christians you don't be around? Have you seen any any Christians that you didn't want to be around? <laughs> Have you? How about you, brother? <laughs> Anybody out there? Huh? And if you hang around them too much, it'll, whatever they got will jump on you. And then you start talking about the body of Christ and hurting the body of Christ, dividing the body of Christ, and God will say, I'll have to deal with that. See, that's it. You've never heard that preached in a church because the preacher's too scared to tell the people that. But I tell you that because I want you to be safe. You know how to act now. You know how to treat one another. Now, I know that's heavy. It's in the Word. Is that the Word? Yeah. Am I preaching the Word? Yeah. The Bible says preach the Word. In season, out of season. Because I love you. Now, let's get it down to where we live in our family. Ooh. Don't go that way tonight, Bob. <laughs> let's try to have a, a little joy in this place tonight. When, when I read that scripture, I, Susan, I, I'm so sorry, darling. Will you forgive me? <laughs> Somebody might have to do that. Men, submit to your wives. I didn't even hear an amen on that one. <laughs> I thought all the girls would say, Amen. <laughs> We are to submit to, submit to one another. We're to, we're to submit to one another. <laughs> Let's see if I can find something that isn't here a little lighter. <laughs> Let's see if I can find Hebrews. That's a good one. Yeah, Let's see what it says over here. It says, uh, uh, this is a good one. Uh, <clears throat> Maybe this will be a little lighter. I don't know. Hebrews uh, 13, verse 7. Hebrews 13, verse 7. <clears throat> Remember your leaders and superiors in authority, for it was they who brought to your, you the word of God. Observe attentively and consider their manner of living. That's why I watch my living. Has anybody seen me since you've known, and some of you have known for many years, ever curse anybody out in church? Have you seen me do anything that's wrong? You can stand up. I'll, I'll still love you. Because I do most of my stuff behind closed doors. <laughs> but I am aware as a, a minister of God that, that we are to be examples. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Every a minister in this place has to come to that place to be able to say that. Follow me as I follow Christ. And I think every believer ought to say that. Same, same to your children. Look what it says, though. 
who brought to you the word of God, observe and attentively and consider their manner of living. The outcome of their well-spent lives and imitate their faith. Their convictions that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ, and their leading of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. Boy, that's a lot, isn't it? That's powerful. Well, that's not too heavy, but let's try another one. Uh, go to 17. Let's see what that, maybe that'll be lighter. Give us a little break. Verse 17, same chapter. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them. Now, if I tell you to go run up and jump off the bridge, don't do that. We're talking about a man of God that walks straight, loves you, and he, and he instructs you to do something. Don't oppose him. How many of you know we are in a, 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 an opposing world? Everybody opposing one another. One nation opposing the next nation. Politics. Oh, my goodness. Don't go there, Bob. I won't. <clears throat> Continuously recognize their authority over you. Willie's been teaching us men about authority back there. You know, I try to obey authority. I shared this with you not too long ago. Uh, Susan and me took a, a, a day off Sunday, and we went up to Lake City and uh, went over to Conway and all that, and we were singing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. She said, what's those blue lights doing behind us? <laughs> Pull over. Said me uh, six dollars and something. And what got me, and, and believe it, I was cool. Well, I ain't going no further. <laughs> the last uh, sign I saw was 60 miles an hour. So I'm doing 60 miles an hour. Cars passing me left and right. And guess who gets the ticket? I do. So I stop. I say, well, she said, 45 miles an hour. I said, no, 60. She said, 45. I said, 60. She kept writing. Tell it to the judge. Tell it to the judge. <laughs> but I was cool. So we went home singing. Oh, what a day it was. <laughs> well, I was honest. I said to the officer, I said, really, I wasn't driving. She was, <laughs> my wife does all the driving, you know. And some wives do a lot of driving. You, you know what I mean? You know, well, we won't go that way. <sighs> we don't have any in here, do we? <laughs> Drives, okay. You know, drive your husband nuts. I mean drive. <laughs> See, if I don't get you laughing, you'll shoot me, I know. <laughs> but you see, it pays to obey. Think about it now. One disobedient of one man brought sin into the world, but the obedience of one man, Christ Jesus, redeemed all human race. Amen. Obedience. And I, I do my best to do the speed limit, and I saw the 60 miles an hour, so I was doing it. But I never saw the 45, you see? But it doesn't make no difference. The shows no mercy. And I said, Lord, thank you for grace. 
Oh, God, without your grace. And I don't mean to... to, to, to um, Overtax it, but I have read somewhere where sin abounds, uh, grace abounds more. And I don't know about you, but I tell you, I need God's grace every moment and every day, every second. And I tell you, I respect, I respect my wife, and I respect every one of you. And I want to thank God for this assembly. You're a good people, a good people, and you treated Susan and me right over the years, and I appreciate it. And you're going to get great rewards for that. Absolutely. I thank you. But I can trust you got my back covered. I got your back covered. You have, I don't think I don't think I've ever heard Frank say anything bad about anybody. I've never heard Willie up there. Never. Mike right there. Never. Some of you. I've never heard never heard say anything bad about anybody. Now I don't know what you do behind the closet, but I mean in front of me. <laughs> But I want you to know God sees you behind the closet now. All right. His eyes, his eyes are everywhere. But see, this, this is serious business. And we, if, we, if we don't realize that, then we can get careless. And we wonder why they do that all out there. And I'm wondering, well, why does the church do what it's doing? Causing division, talking about one another. And I thank God in this church, we don't do that. And I give God the glory for that and the praise for that. So remember, be strong and faithful. God sees you, and he'll reward you for your faithfulness. Now, in 2 Corinthians 13.5, 2 Corinthians 13.5, this is something that uh, where are you at? There it is up there. All right, now there's a time we have to examine ourselves. How many have gone to school in here? Let's see your hands. Okay, how many are glad you're out of school? No, you're not. You're in the school of the Spirit. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Examine and test and evaluate your own selves, not your neighbor, not the person sitting next to you, to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it. Woo, glory. Somebody say glory. Another glory. One to the left. Under the right. That's enough. Look what it says. And showing the proper fruits of it, test and prove yourselves. Not Christ. Do you not yourselves realize and know thoroughly by an ever increasing experience that Jesus Christ is in you? Oh, in you by his spirit, unless you are counterfeit disapproved on trial and rejected we have christ living in our heart by the way that's one of the mysteries that we were talking about which is our only hope of glory christ in us the world don't understand that that's not god's ways see it's more than being saved it, it, it's it's having our spirit man born again turn to um, Ephesians chapter uh, uh, 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. See, there's some things we have to ask God to really make it alive to us. Okay, look at that. And you, that, who's that? See, that's me. He made alive. He made, you were as dead, I was as dead as we could be. We were carnal people, dead. When you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins, notice, and you, and you he made alive. When you were born again, he made you alive. Your inner man came alive and became a new creature in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have become new. Old things have gone away. See, we have to see that our spirit man is a brand new creature. And when I say you're holy, that's what's holy. Now, your conduct, most of I see most of your conduct is right good. I said most of you. And I appreciate that. It is good to be around good people. You know, I love to be around good people. You know what I mean? Amen. People that are happy. People that ha have joy. You know, we're, we're to have joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. And we got so much to have joy about. Did anybody have anything to eat today? 
Uh, did you, I didn't close the wear. You got shoes on your feet. How many's got a bed to sleep in? How many's got a house? How many's got their own room? <laughs> How many's got food in the refrigerator? What is your address? <laughs> I know my sense of humor probably really messes some of you up, but I want you to know I'm just getting you out of your old uh, legalistic, traditional ways and get happy in the Lord. Because we got a lot to rejoice about. In fact, the Bible says happy is the man whose sins have been forgiven. Amen. Listen, our sins have been forgiven, but they've been taken as far as the east from the west. Mm -hmm. What sin? I got news for you. The blood's not lost its power. So we don't have to try to, 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 to be number one on the stick. Because let me tell you something. You're already number one. Did you hear what I said? I said you was already number one. You can't get no higher than you is right now. You're seated at the right hand side of the Father, right by me. And Jesus. I mean, that's high. That's high. See, it, it, that's got to get in your brain, in your spirit. But that's powerful. Powerful. You know, when I first started out in Christianity, the, the, my biggest enemy was me. And most of you can say the same thing. Always mad at me. I did it again. I messed up again. I, I, I lived for quite a few years in, uh, in Romans chapter 7, verse 14, right on down the line. I found out that Jesus took care of it at Calvary. Oh, man, I tell you, that set me free. Some of you ain't got that revelation yet, but it, when, it, when you get it, you'll be jumping and jiving. I remember I read the book about, um, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name right now. But anyway, he, when he found out that he died with Christ, he, he, ran out the, he ran out of his apartment, run down the steps, run out in the street. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Who was it? Yeah. And what he was saying was that old me died with Christ 2,000 years ago. And I'm a new creature in Christ. Yes, I still have the same body. It's got some uh, habits that I've developed. And I'm still trying to break some of those habits. I'm in here still trying to break some of your habits. You know what I mean? I remember when I, when I used to, I was working on the airplane. And, and I was trying to put this nut on the boat. Man, I tell you, I was sweating. And, and I was just about ready to curse it out. And I backed up. Is it all right if I tell it like it is? Uh, you just want me to fuzz it up a little bit. Yeah, I backed up a little bit and I started cursing. The guy says, son, bless it. That's when I learned to bless everything. I bless you. I bless, I bless my car. I bless everything. Coming in and going, I bless, I bless that thing. And I tell you, I bless it. I got back up there and put the nut back on that boat. Just that easy. I said, thank you, Lord. And for two hours, I, two hours I tried to do it. Two hours. See, I bless you, Bob. Oh, I thank you. Let me tell you something. You're going to get a blessing. And you know who's going to bless you? Tell me. God. Isn't that awesome? When you bless me, God will bless you. But see that? Whoa, you, you know how. You, look at you. You just want to, you're just getting all the blessings. I said it. But see, the world don't understand that. That's not the world's way. You mess with me, brother. Boom! Huh? Come on, church. See, that's what's wrong with our society, unless you understand what's going on out there. But if we're not careful, we'll let that old man rise up and do something bad. And oh, I could give you names. Not in the faith shipwreck. That's what they call it. But thank God, you guys have learned to love one another, to have joy in your heart. See, we don't, people don't understand, but we transmit what we have. Did you know if you was around a sad person 24-7, you'd become sad? Bad company corrupts good morals. That's just the way it is. These are eternal principles, and we have to learn them and operate in them and watch them work. Boy, I had to do a lot of changing in my life. Anybody here had to do any changing in your life? Raise your hand. I just want to see it. 
Hang around. You know, it's been to the best. I thank God that God has changed me. Let me stop here just for a moment. And, 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 and how many in here has relatives that always need a dollar or something? <laughs> Come on, raise your hand. Always need a buck. But my first encounter with that, inside of me, you know, you know, that, you know, you know it, don't you? Ooh. <laughs> Give it to him anyway. Go ahead. I don't care. Give it to him. <laughs> of course, y'all didn't do that. But you know now, see, when God does the work, oh, is that all they want? Just, just want forty dollars? Give them a hundred. But see, that's not that's not man's way. See, you don't understand. Give, and it shall be given unto you. See, the world says keep. And this is scripture. And you'll come to naught. But God says give. See, God's ways are different. And I tell you, we have given thousands away. Thousands away. Oh, you think I'm lying. I ain't lying. I'm telling you. And God has given us thousands back. Amen. One deal over there. One lot. I paid $5,600 for $5,600 back in 1985, I think. I sold it to the apartments over there for 100000 I sold two lots. That was 200000 Gave the church 10%. And the other $100 was my daughter's because uh, I gave her that lot, and her husband collected that 100000 And they said, Granddad, we want to give uh, our tithes to the church. So they gave $10,000 to this church. See, I've lived long enough to see God work. I love it. It's exciting. But I've had my moments, as you have your moments, but I want to encourage you to remember, we have a will, and we want to obey the Lord as much as we can. Now, Ephesians 4, and then we're going to knock off. I might even let you off a little early tonight if you behave yourself. <laughs> Ephesians 4, verse 1. Are you ready? I, therefore, that's Paul speaking, the prisoner of the Lord. See, uh, Rome thought that uh, they had uh, Paul in jail. He, he didn't see it that way. No, he was a prisoner for the Lord. Appeared to and begged you to walk. Now, he's talking to Christian people. He says, I appeal to you and beg you to walk. Lead a life worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called. With behavior that is a credit to the summons to God's service. Now, aren't you glad that God's made provisions? If you mess up, you know what to do. I've shared that with you, First John 1, 9. And you probably have to use that quite a bit. But after a while, as you learn to walk in the Spirit... It's easier because you can sub submit to the Lord easier. And it's, you just sense his presence every moment of the day. See, that's where Susan and me are. We just sense his presence all the time. All the time. It's awesome. Let's go get the next verse now. Living as becomes you with complete lowliness, lowliness of mind, humility, and meekness, unselfishness, gentleness, mildness, with patience, bearing with one another, and making allowances because you love one another. Have you ever had anybody just nail you to the wall? How many's been how many's been nailed to the wall in here besides me? They would not. You know, they corner you in the wall, mail, nail you down, but good. Beat you to no end. Show grace. I was watching um, the news about this judge giving people grace. Did you see that on the news? And, uh, and he would just give people so much grace. 
and it changed that. And I thought about Romans, um, uh, put it on the board, Romans um, 4, no, Romans 2, 4, Romans 2, 4. And we'll probably close on this. Or are you so blind as to trifle with the, and presume upon and despise and understand and, est and underestimate the wealth of his kindness? Everybody say, I'm kind. Stay kind. And forbearance and long suffering and patience. That's God's attitude towards us. And that should be our attitude towards one another. Are you unmindful or actually ignorant of the fact that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repent, to change your mind and inner man to accept God's will? I, and I, I've said this before. Susan's kindness has brought me to repentance. My wife's and your kindness, many of your, your kindness to Susan and me has brought us to repentance. How many understand that? Well, you live long enough, you'll understand it. To be able to come out of the carnality and out of this carnal mind in this and let God do that work in in us to we can enter into the into the into the spirit of God to walk in the spirit it's a whole new atmosphere around you you think different you you feel different because you're in the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit practice the presence of God 24/7 this one man's name was Clarence Lawrence or something like that. And he could be in a noisy kitchen washing dishes. And people say, how do you stand that? He says, it's very simple. You see me in the kitchen, but I'm really in the Lord. See, there's a place for God's people. But the carnal mind can't comprehend it. The, the, the natural man cannot understand it. See, it's, it comes to us by revelation. You can know the whole Bible, quote the whole Bible, and be a carnal man or a carnal woman. Because the change has to come through revelation, the revela that God opens your heart, your mind. And you see, you understand, you comprehend. You, you can't explain it. But all you know, it's good. See, I'm trying to, I'm trying to particularly and try to get you to see something here that's spiritual. And, 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 and some of you have touched it. I know, I know who you are. I can tell it in your life. You've touched it. And it's wonderful, isn't it? Wonderful to walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit. Someone uh, told me one time and it was all kind of confusion and everything. And, and he was letting me know about it. And I said, what confusion? And I realized all the confusion was in him. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? And, and we've all been there. I want to commend this church for loving one another allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life, to change you from glory to glory by His Spirit. Because you see, that's the whole thing. If you walk in the Spirit, He'll do His ministry through you. Simple, not complicated. And what a joy it is. So remember, never Never, never hurt the body of Christ individually or corporately because God takes that very serious. We need to walk circumspectly 
in these last days because we see things on the horizon. If you're a spirit person, you see what's coming. You know it's here. It's happening all around us. Even in our own town, we've seen downtown a, a church, somebody walking in, shooting people. So let's be strong and courageous and love one another. Continue to go forward in God, reaching out to other people, loving them. Walk in love. Go to bed in love. Wake up in love. Because love is the more excellent way. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, that you've done a great work in your people here. And I thank you that I see the growth and the maturity. And I thank you, Father, for the knowledge now that they have a little bit more to understand why you say don't do certain things. And I thank you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In the way we've quenched you today, Holy Spirit, we are sorry. We thank you for guiding us and leading us now tomorrow that we'll have a great day in God. And we thank you now. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.